So what we did is we, did, we just did it in stages, yeah? So we take 10 mil, rough, finish, 10 mil, rough, finish, 10 mil, rough, finish. And in Hypermill we have a uh, technology called smooth overlap. So it, what it effectively does is just blend the tool parts into each other. So you wouldn't see then where one section ends and the next one begins. What does it take to machine something that isn't just a part, but is actually art? Well, I'm here with John to find out exactly how and how much stress went into making this crown. Now, John, before we get into machining the crown, where did the idea come from? Because you've made some impressive things before, yep. but this is a whole new level. Yeah, thanks. Well, yeah, the idea came from a it's really a collaboration between Open Mind and Mazak. Last year we had obviously the, the coronation and we wanted something topical that meant something to the, to the UK people. Now, looking at this, I'm guessing you're not going to be able to just get a model from anywhere. No. <laughs> it's no, going to be quite secretive. So yeah. where did the model come from and how hard was it to get from what you got to actually a machinable model? Yeah. Yeah, there's always a challenge is where to get the data from. You know, people have great ideas, but if you don't have a decent data set, it's impossible to actually make it. So a hidden website somewhere, <laughs> you know, um, we found a, an STL mesh um, and downloaded that and went straight from STL to obviously Hypermill. So there was no converter necessary. You know, there was no third, third party software where we had to convert it. We just opened and worked straight directly from the mesh file itself. Now, obviously getting a mesh file, somebody's designed isn't going to be perfect. No. So how no. did how did Hypermill help on the CAD side mm. to actually make that model machinable? Yeah, absolutely. This this is unachievable if you don't have good CAD. You you physically cannot do it. The STL itself is 100, 200, 1,000 individual tri triangles, but obviously it will stitch together. So I couldn't just pick on a face and say, I want to machine this face because it's just one big mesh. So in Hypermill, and obviously the CAD side of Hypermill, we were able to um, really drive from the STL but create guiding geometry for it. So I can obviously create 2D geometries for boundaries, so curves, splines, that kind of stuff. Or I can take a 3D mesh element and turn that into a face for actually driving the tool paths themselves. So without the CAD, this, this, this can't be done. So this project wouldn't have even had the get-go? Absolutely not. Now, there's a lot of detail on this. Mm -hmm. And we spoke earlier that you couldn't just pick one of these and then pattern them. No. That must have made this quite a long it process. Did. It did, and we only figured it out quite a long way through. Um, so it's some of the detail further down. Um, obviously, I'm starting from the top and working my way down. And at the top, it's easier, you know, um, and it's repeatable. But actually, when we get further and further down, um, you realize that the space in between these gems, uh, they look like balls, but they're gems, these are all different. The space in between the detail on the bottom, they're all so different. These. Yeah, so what I thought would be a nice, easy, oh, I'll just do one and then pattern it around. So that, that didn't work. <laughs> that didn't work. Now, talking about machining this from top to bottom, mm -hmm. you must have come through quite a lot of challenges as well because of, let's take this side. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really holding that no. on. So how did you make it and also get a nice finish because to yeah. me that would have just been a vibrated mess. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it gives. It, I think it's about one mil in the individual areas there thickness, and we're you know 50, 60 mil up. So if you were to conventionally just I'll machine down, rough it all out to 0.3, finish it, it would have just flexed backwards and forwards because it is. You can see there's a bit of wobble in it. Still. I'm glad you did that, yeah. not me. <laughs> yeah. So what we did is we did, we just did it in stages. Yeah. So we take 10 mil, rough finish. 10 mil, rough finish. 10 mil, rough finish. And in Hypermill, we have a uh, technology called smooth overlap. So it, what it effectively does is just blend the tool parts into each other. So you wouldn't see then where one section ends and the next one begins. And I think that's a big thing to point out is, obviously this has been done with multiple tools. Yes. But you can't see where one tool's finished and mm -hmm. the next tool started. Yeah. It is, the finish on this is absolutely unreal. Mm. And you actually have finishing operations in Hypermill to help with that as well. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so we have um, the ability to really drive off the true mathematical surface that we can create and drive faces as well. So the, the point distribution, how we lay down these tool paths is, is so good that 
you don't need to be you know, a super a genius to really just throw down a toolpath and get a nice result. That's effectively what you do and there's no, it would be nice to get it you know, all in one toolpath, but that's not really doable. So what we have to do is split it into individuals. Uh, so I'll do you know, a few sections around here with the same you know, two or three toolpaths in each section and the way it sort of generates the, 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 the data that we can then post out is, is so good that it doesn't matter if it doesn't look so clean in terms of the toolpath, the actual end result is always so good. And, and talking about toolpaths, obviously there's quite a few very small gaps in here. There is. So how did Hard Mill, how did you program this mm -hmm. knowing that your tools, tool holders weren't going to crash when you are literally... Yeah. You, that gap must be nearly the size of the end mill. Yeah, I think it got down to like six, six to eight mil, and we used a six mil lollipop for that. Yeah, what, <laughs> really difficult. Um, what we have in Hypermill is is a technology called virtual machine, and this is NC code simulation. So not a, a typical post process of where it's a, a translation of, of toolpaths. We generate the NC code, and that's what we simulate. Um, which was really important for this because it took such a long time. I couldn't be there all day, every day, nor could the engineer from Mazak. It was very much a case of proving it out in virtual machine, generating the NC code, and then trusting the process that it's going to be okay. And yeah, luckily it was. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, looking at this part, it is, it is absolutely unreal. I've seen some of the parts you've made before. You've definitely took a step up Thank you into much. something I've never seen done before. Mm and I cannot wait to see what you make next. Yeah, we're already in planning for it. Well, well don't, keep, don't give yeah, anything give away, away yeah. because <laughs> that will be a next video I cannot wait to see. Definitely.